something that looks interesting and then pursuing it and see where it leads. So being very tired up there in the main woods, out and walking around in the snow, uh, just looking at things, well, <coughs> I'll tell you what, what got me started with the grouse. Uh, <coughs> but first I have to tell you a little bit about uh, birds in winter, how birds um, survive in the winter. Uh, this is uh, <coughs> obviously an, an interesting problem, uh, and it had, uh, uh, it had uh, captivated me when I wrote uh, <coughs> the, the Winter World. And the problem is that there's so little food, and that it's so cold, which means that you have to produce a lot of heat, which means that you have to eat a lot. And uh, uh, one of the students, for example, just had, had just asked me uh, why I was interested in kinglets. Well, I was interested in, in kinglets because they're little tiny things, they're about five or six grand. And, uh, and if you take a tiny little thing that's not much bigger in body than the end of your thumb, uh, <clears throat> and it's heated to uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you put it at minus 30, it's going to cool mighty fast, and this bird now has to stay warm all night long, so how does it do it, and where does the fuel come from? So here was a very interesting problem, and I pursued that. And anyway, it turned out <coughs> that, that one of the solutions <coughs> of the kinglets is that they huddle together in groups. They make kind of a four-pack or a six-pack uh, all fluffed up uh, next to each other, <coughs> and that's one of the reasons why they fly around in flocks in the wintertime, because uh, they have to be feeding to the very last moment of life. You go out in the woods, you'll find them out there hitting around, uh, even at dusk still. And I had followed them again and again and again, and they disappeared. Well, they just went into a spruce somewhere and got them together. All of a sudden, they made a few little peeps and they them all together. And uh, <coughs> finally, uh, I predicted that what, what had to be going on. And uh, actually, after I wrote the book and predicted it, I actually found it and, and published it afterwards. Usually, you have to publish it beforehand. Uh, so, anyways, with me, uh, so little birds have a problem uh, with food, especially if they're eating insects. Uh, now, a, a grouse is a much, much bigger. It's about weighs about 600 grams, so it's it's over a hundred times bigger in mass <clears throat> and would cool much, much slower. So it should not have that much of a problem <clears throat> in keeping warm. However, uh, it has that much more mass and needs that much more food. So it has to have a steady diet. And uh, <clears throat> so here's a problem of food and uh, uh, but <clears throat> what the grouse does is feed on buds in the wintertime. And buds are uh, you know, pre-packaged food up in the trees, and there's essentially kind of an unlimited supply of it. So there's plenty of food, so plenty of potential sources of heat, of, of, of <clears throat> energy, of fuel to produce heat. And they're going to be cooling long, so they shouldn't have a problem staying uh, staying warm. Now, <clears throat> uh, grass have been known to, probably most people know that, that grass in the wintertime will, will make snow dens. They go under the snow, uh, under the snow to, to keep themselves warm uh, throughout the night. And uh, uh, that seemed kind of interesting because none of the other birds do that. You see, if this is a great uh, <clears throat> solution to keep it warm, why doesn't the kinglets do it? Why don't the chickadees do it? Why don't the woodpeckers do it? Why don't the finches do it? Why don't the blue jays do it? Why don't the crows do it? None of them do it. Only, only the rough grouse does it. So I kind of knew that, but <clears throat> all of this kind of uh, took me, uh, gave me a uh, 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 thought when <clears throat> I think it was uh, in early February, the year before last, when there was lots and lots of snow, 
uh, it was, uh, I for, forgot the exact pieces now, but it was two or three feet deep up there in Maine. <coughs> and <coughs> I was walking through the woods and it was around noontime on a sunny day, one that wasn't too, uh, too uh, cold, and suddenly, boom, a, a grouse popped out of the snow. So, <coughs> it had been uh, uh, hiding under the snow, and presumably, uh, the idea is that, that they do that to keep warm. And studies have been made that, you know, just how many calories they produce and how many calories it takes to keep warm. And yes, the, the grouse, uh, in the winter time, they, they roost where it's, where they're out of the wind, they roost in dense uh, bushes, uh, conifers, uh, and they go under the snow in order to keep warm. Now, <coughs> this grouse, so, uh, uh, didn't seem to be needed to keep warm because it was it wasn't that cold and uh, and uh, so what uh, what was it doing then? So that uh, uh, so I spread away the snow and then saw all kinds of the droppings uh, and so okay so I started counting the droppings. Well, why would I start counting how many poops uh, a grouse made? Well, there was a good reason, because I figured it, it takes some time to make one, one poop, and two or three might take two or three times as long. Well, I counted, and I think there were 35 or so. This was at noon time. So I knew that grouse had been under the snow there most of the day. Uh, so after that, I decided, well, I'm going to have to uh, uh, look at some more eggs and, uh, and, and see uh, how many there are. How long do they stay? Maybe I can figure out how long a grouse stays under the snow by counting the poop. <coughs> the thing is, they have a very high fiber diet. Uh, they, uh, they eat the buds and they fill up a big crop and it takes <coughs> all night to digest all of those. Uh, <coughs> and that leaves a lot behind. So, <clears throat> anyway, let me just uh, go through some of these slide uh, pictures now, and uh, we'll talk about this. Actually, this, this is one uh, <clears throat> that I caught last week, by hand. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, uh, that's because grouse are very foolish birds. Uh, and many of you will have probably seen them uh, hitting windows. This one hit a, uh, a fen uh, fence in a, in a tennis court in the town of Well. Driving by, boom, I saw a grouse fly, bang in, drop to the ground, pick it up, and it, it revived. Uh, but unfortunately then, after picking it up, and it was revived, flew out of my hand and hit the side of the building. <laughs> This picture was taken and died. So, a uh, lot of people, have, have any of you ever seen a, a, a grouse that will follow you around in the woods? I've talked with a number of people who, who told me uh, that uh, I've read about uh, also that uh, one, one logger, he had a, a skitter and he said every day he, when he went out to do his logging, there would be a grouse following him. Uh, behind the skitter, and uh, talk to a couple of other people who had their grouse come to their house uh, and follow people around the garden, just walk behind them. So anyways, now, uh, I don't know how to advance this, it should be going, going forward, but it may be other direction. No? No, it's not working. Right. Anybody know how to do it? There you go. Well, maybe we're pointing at that. Oh, I have to point at Okay, can you uh, take the 